Hello. Look at these guys. Look at them. Oh. Oh, let's have a look around. <laughs> We are back at Forge Mill Farm um, and we are currently in the lambing barn and um, that's also got some kids in it. Hello, hello. Hi, Alex. Hi. These two little kids belong to this goat here who's so beautiful. What's her name? Molly. Molly. It's his Molly. And the other one's Millie. And these are her babies. Aww. And they escape probably every, I don't know, half an hour. They're already very good at escaping. So, yeah. and have we got a boy and a girl? Or I think it's two boys two in boys. here. And they aren't quite like their mum. They look a bit different, don't they? Oh, she's hiding. They look a bit different to their mum because she's a golden guernsey and these are a golden guernsey cross with a bagot who are our other goats. So there we go. But welcome to Forge Mill Farm anyway. And we're here with our Springtime in the Valley Facebook Live, so make sure you get all your friends involved and come and see us. And ask lots of questions while we're here, it'll be great. It'll be yeah, give a, tell us in the comments who you are, where you're from, and we will give you some shout outs. And also you can ask any questions you've got about the farm, um, and we will get our farmers here to answer them for you. We've also got a really exciting announcement to make at the very end. <laughs> oh, look at him waving. We've got an ex important announcement that we will make at the very end of our video. So keep watching with us. Um, but anyway, what are we going to do today, Alex? So we've got a few jobs to do on the farm today that we thought you guys could help us out with and watch. So number one, we've got to milk this goat because she has so much milk because she's a special breed of goat that is actually made for milking. And these two little goat kids can't drink it up. So that's job number one. And then job number two, we have all of these ewes and lambs in our mothering up pens who are ready to graduate into the nursery. And we'll introduce you to some special ones in here and the triplets who you would have seen on Facebook last week. So that's the plan for today. Nice, we've got Laura watching and Emily's watching and we've already had a question about how is Martin the Ram and I reckon we'll go and see him later on, shall we? We'll go and see if he's around. We definitely can go and see Martin the Ram and see our other goat kids that we've had born that are all one of the so you'll see the difference between these guys. So yeah. <laughs> All right then. Amazing. So what do we need to do to get goat milking, Alex? Well, what we need is Handy Millie over there, who is going to come with her bucket. I've got your bucket already, Millie. And then the goat is really very used to this. <coughs> what she does all the time. And if you've ever come to visit us at Forge Mill Farm, you would have seen the goat milking demonstration. And this is what we do. So I'm going to put this little kid down. It's not food. We're going to milk you. <laughs> all right, now I'll hold her up. And then Millie is going to milk her from her udder. Good girl. If you go closer, you'll be able to see the milk coming out. You see that? And this goat has a rather unusual teat that at the end, it's actually got two openings rather than one, which is why you can see two streams of milk. And a goat like this could make up to three litres of milk a day. That's like a big bo bottle of Coke plus a bit more. And you can use it for all sorts of things. I don't know if you want to ask questions in the comments or say what you think you might be able to use it for. But this is what we'll do. And she's got two sides, a teat each side. And uh, yeah, so Millie's doing a good job at this. Good job, Millie. Oh, not Millie, Molly. <laughs> Millie and Molly. Millie and Molly. <laughs> She's milking Molly. That's a tongue twister. Yeah. Wait till Millie's milking Millie. That will be an interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> so, if you come back to the farm, once we hopefully reopen, you will be able to see this as a demonstration. It's all right, girl. So, one day, we hope to be able to sell goat's milk in our shop. 
we have actually already secured six more Golden Guernsey goats ready to hopefully start making milk by the end of the summer. So keep your eyes peeled. If you love goat's milk, uh, you can hopefully buy it at Forge Mill Farm Shop one day very soon. So Alex, a lot of people don't realise that goat's milk and cow's milk isn't cold when it comes out because we're used to drinking it from the refrigerator. Yeah. What sort of temperature is it, Millie? Um, it's body temperature, so what's the average temperature for a goat? Oh, it's probably something like 37, something around that. Yeah, so it'll be about that, won't it? So if you put your hands on your wrist, that's about the temperature the milk is when it comes out, isn't it? Yeah. And it has to be cooled down if we were going to drink it ourselves. Yes, definitely. So on a normal farm, if you were milking goats or cows, what happens is the milk... Is that, always, is that enough? To yeah. Do? Um, what happens is the milk, you go, they go into this parlour, it's called, where you milk them, and the milk comes out using a machine that sucks the milk out, and it goes through a cooler, so it instantly cools it to about 7 degrees, which is how cold it used to be to stay fresh, and then it can go as cold as 4 degrees in the big tank before it gets picked up and ready for processing, so yeah. And is it true that if a farmer doesn't get his milk down to 4 degrees or 7 degrees, then it gets thrown away? Yeah, so if your machine isn't working properly or you're not checking it properly and the tanker comes and the milk's too warm, it can't be taken and you don't get any money for it. So farmers are so, so, so careful about clean milk and cold milk to make sure it's safe for people to drink. So that's all the sorts of things we're going to have to start doing if we are able to start milking our goats and selling it in the shop. That's brilliant. A big shout out and a hi to Dreddy and Yani and Demi Taylor. Glad to see you watching. Lots of other people watching as well. Nice to see you guys. Nice to have you joining us today. Uh, we really, really missed you at Forge Mill Farm and we can't wait to see you all again. Yeah. Definitely. And the animals can't wait to see you guys too. They definitely miss visitors and definitely miss snacks that you give them when you buy the food in the shop. So does that mean you've had to give them extra cuddles all over winter? We have. We've been a bit busy, but we have no time for little strokes and cuddles <laughs> and little extra snacks, especially for you, number five, if you remember her from last time. Oh, she was the really greedy one, wasn't <laughs> yeah, she? she loved snacks. And even now she's in the field, she'll still put her head up and have a look for a little snack from us. So yes. Brilliant. So now, exciting times with the goats. We really can't wait. We can't wait to show you sort of production because all we do on at farming is all about making food. So we really want to show you that on the farm. Yeah. Brilliant. What's next, Alex? Well, do you want to have a go at getting these lambs out, or should we introduce you to the triplets first? <gasps> Let's meet the triplets, shall we? All so these right. triplets were born last week, um, last Tuesday it was, to this lovely Lester Longwall you here. Um, who is just enjoying a bit of a nibble. Oh, I'm getting really close to you. Here we go. <laughs> um, and you might be able to see just in the corner of her pen, all the way over there, are uh, the three triplets that she had last week. Should I go and stand them up to see Yeah. Them? Oh dear. So they're very big for triplets, aren't they, Alex? Huge for triplets, definitely. They were a bit stuck, if you remember, coming out. We might have a video we can show you of that, actually, but they were all tangled up. The first one was coming out sideways, which wasn't helpful. And then the second one was backwards or leg back or something, and they were all scrunched up inside, which is why we think that one at the back has got a bit of a bad leg, because he was all scrunched up inside her. But amazing size for triplets, definitely. So Laura and I were here when those triplets were born and we saw that they were stuck and it was getting into quite an emergency situation where the ewe might have died and the triplets might have died. And we were amazed at how clever Farmer Alex was and how actually we've got all these healthy, 
with a healthy sheep and three babies now today thanks to her saving their lives and this is what farmers do every day and a lot of people don't realize they're very clever aren't you Alex? <laughs> no no <laughs> it's all instinct we think definitely but you guys saw her at the start didn't you she looked like she was lambing and then we went for a walk around the farm and we came back 40 minutes later an hour later and she still hadn't had them so that at that point we knew something was wrong and yeah, but no, it's amazing to have them all alive. I was really doubtful at one point that they'd be so healthy. So yeah, so these guys are ready to go to their new pen. Do you want to see that? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to head out the gate where you are, Laura, now. Okay. And we're going to go all the way round, round to the nursery. So I think everything's set up ready to go. A quick hi to Maisie and Jake before we move, move the lambs. Oh, hi, Maisie and Jake. We're glad you could be watching. And Oliver and Tugby too. Oh, he hi, loves Oliver. visiting you. Hi from Madison and Sam. Madison and Sam. And please say hello to James and Amelia, who are already enjoying learning about milking. Well, that's really, really good because we love it when children learn about farming. Here they come. Here they come in. Oh, they're going the wrong way. We're also saying hi to Jade and Baby Bump. Oh, they're going the wrong way. Come on, guys. Oh, they need a bit of a helping hand. We bring the lambs down first, then mum will follow. In they come. in a straw pen so it's probably a bit different for them and this is the one that they're on now and it's the type of bedding that keeps them nice and dry and nice and warm and it's different to hay which is over there which is what they eat so hay is grass and straw is their bedding and it's made from crops like wheat and barley which make your Weetabix and your bread so there we go so they look already settled don't they in there yeah. Look at them having a drink. That's perfect. That's just what we want to see. So. Yes. Um, who else needs to come in here? Well, should we do number twos? Oh, they're number twos. Should we do number, number ones? Yeah, let's okay. bring the number ones in all here. Right. Do you want to get number ones, Tom and Millie? Now, first thing though, Alex, where did all the lambs go? We know when we last watched Lambing Live that all the lambs were in here as the nursery. Where did all of those ones go? Very true. They haven't disappeared. They've actually gone out to the fields to eat the grass, which is perfectly natural. It's exactly what they're meant to do. And the best thing is they're turning that grass into milk which is feeding their lambs to make food as well so no they're outside and if you go for a walk around the valley you might see them lovely can we say a few more hellos over the lambs we hope you can hear us over the sheep <laughs> they're getting very very noisy hi to harlow and rowan hi to Jaden as well he loves animals um and who else have we got we've got lots and lots of people watching we've had a question about whether we are wheelchair friendly yeah good question so the yard is wheelchair friendly some of the buildings are more difficult to get to but we have doors we can open but at the moment nobody's allowed indoors anyway so yes the yard is wheelchair friendly but some parts are a bit off-roady so you'll be all good i'm sure the other thing to say is our staff are really really helpful here so if you can't get to an area because of accessibility issues just stop a member of staff and they may even be able to bring an animal to show you definitely anybody wearing green is the one you want to see and yep a hundred percent they'll help you out so yeah except the sandwell team who will wear black <laughs> Look at these in here. We've got number threes on their way as well. It's very noisy in here now that all of the sheep are moving. <laughs> they're all wondering what's going on. And so they're all really noisy. But here comes number three. So these are the numbers of the Lester Long Wool sheep. Oh, I know I'm in your way. Look at them here. 
making sure they're all together as a family. Mum's just making sure they're all here. Is anybody else coming in? Yeah, we can have one more. Number four can come. That's okay. So, the eagle-eyed amongst you may notice something different about these sheep than the last sheep that we've done differently. If you have a think back to the numbers that we sprayed, you'll see the ewes actually don't have a number this time. And that's because their wool is so precious, we don't want to get it too colourful. But it's okay because we still know who the lambs are. So that's all good. Here comes number four. Nice. Number four's coming. They're coming. They're coming. Oliver's trying to feed them Easter eggs. I don't think they'll like Easter eggs. You eat them yourself, Oliver. But are they coming? They're just coming in here. Yeah. There we go. Come on then. We're all in here. So Loretta says that they live so close, they can sometimes hear the cows and sheep and most definitely smell the farm. They have lovely walks around the RSPB. It's probably you hear them most when it's food time. Yeah. That's when they get very noisy, isn't it? Definitely. And we've actually got a new noisy arrival who arrived yesterday who will be here for you guys to visit and he's currently living in my garden and this morning at five o'clock he started shouting and he is a cockerel so he has joined the team here and he's very loud so you might be able to hear him as well now so alex will that be your new alarm clock then yes he woke me up way before my alarm clock this morning and he kept going pretty much all morning so yes he's he's in my garden quarantining like we do for covid before he meets all of our chickens oh there we go oh she's having a good drink over there. So this is the first time the lambs have ever got to play with other lambs so it will be so great to see them interacting with each other. Very bouncy. <laughs> and then we've got some more springtime animals if you want to see those. Yeah, you yeah. just turn around. I'm going to turn around. Which way shall I go? This way. This way. This way. This way. Who have we got in here? Have should we have a look? <gasps> They've returned from their Easter Bunny missions back to Forge Mill Farm, ready to meet you guys, hopefully very soon. Oh, they're moving too fast for me. <laughs> it's nice to see that our good friends Jack and Alice are watching again and they want to know how Valentine the sheep is doing. Yeah. Valentine the lamb. Yes. We named a few, didn't we? Valentine the lamb. And oh, I've got a video for you about Valentine the lamb. She got her vaccination about a week ago. Covid vaccination. Not Covid, no. Something a bit different that helps protect them from diseases in the soil. So she's all vaccinated and she's out in the field. And how about on Friday, what do you reckon? Or next Wednesday, when we're on Facebook Live again, we'll go and see Valentine and Tom and Doris and Willow. Who are the yeah, yeah, that that'd named. be great. So yeah, there we go. But these guys are all here ready to see all of the people, hopefully very soon. Nice. Now, we had that question earlier, didn't we? about how is Martin the ram? So do you think it's time to go and find Martin yeah. the ram? Definitely, Okay. Yeah. okay well, so we've head got head to go into a different barn now. So we'll say goodbye to the rabbits. There are a couple in here. You can come and find them sometime. And we'll say goodbye to the lambs in here for now. But look at them. Look at them having a big jump. They are loving being in there. They really are. They are so cute. I know a lot of you have commented with that. They are so cute. They are adorable. Uh, where am I going? I'm going, let's try not to trip over the poo that they've left behind. Um, I don't want to go through all of that. And we are going out. We'll go and see them afterwards, shall we? Let's go and see Martin first, shall we? And 
you mentioned about some baggot goats as well. So we're going over here. This is to Ford Mill Farm Winter Quarters. Now they're coming out of winter now, but I'm sure everybody's still in here. Yeah. Look who we've got in here. So over here, we can go in the right. Thank you. <laughs> oh, is this Martin? Here he is. Tom's going to fix the wardrobe. Is Reggae also in with Martin? Here he is. Yeah. Here he is. There we go, Chloe. What's the actual name? Is it Maverick? Or Maverick? Maverick's the Shropshire, I think. Yeah. So this is Maverick. Murphy, also known as Reggae. Yes, it's a Leicester Longwall, but a black version. So the, the girl you saw inside, he is a Leicester Longwall as well. And then next to him is uh, Maverick, who is the dad of all of our lambs, like um, Willow and Valentine. And then Martin, he's the dad of Tom and Doris and the rest of the other lambs. So, oh, we're saying his name's Reggie. Reggie. So you're either Reggie. Hello, you go. can be Reggie if you want. Hello. Hey. He's Here's Reggie. These beautiful long locks of wool. Reggie looks like he needs a haircut like the rest of yeah. us, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He does it like he needs a haircut, hey? Will he get a COVID haircut after he lockdown? Will, after lockdown, he can have a haircut before it gets too warm so that he can be free from the heat and free from flies which may lay eggs in his wool and cause him a whole load of difficulties so that is why we shear them and maybe another day perhaps tomorrow friday we'll go and see our alpacas who've also got some yeah. locks and they, they, have. they are living with some sheep who have already been sheared because they were so hot the other day we had to shear them oh yeah, there we go it was really hot last week yet yesterday it snowed yes crazy oh but here's martin Martin. Having a little sit down and a bit of a rest. He's a chilled boy, he is. Yeah. Now, who else have we got in here? So, do you want to meet our newest arrivals? Let's in here? come and see our arrivals that are hidden away in here. Can you spot them? Can you see any? Can you see any? Oh, Literally, is in here. There's one running around. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. So, what have we got in here? So, these are our baggot goats. They are a rare breed of goat that are really good at grazing areas that other animals don't want to eat. It's called conservation grazing. So they're really good at that. And they're also really good at escaping, which is why they're in here over the winter. And their little babies, you can see there's three of them. The two at the back on the right have names and they are called Flora and Fauna, like the soil. So that's their names. And there's one more little girl in here. Where's she gone? Oh, she's over there. Can you see behind? Behind that? Here we are. There she is. That one's called, hiding. called Clover. And then behind that goat over there is a little boy. Do you want to go and get him, Millie? He's your favourite, isn't he? See if you can catch him. Don't run around too much, though, if you, don't, if you can't catch him. And his name is Graham, which is a bit of a weird name. Graham? But he is actually a bit grey, and he's a bit different to most ah. baggots. See if Millie can catch Graham. So baggot goats come from Stafford area oh. from about 800 years ago oh, where wow. they were kept on the Blithfield estate, which is not far away. But they are now rarer than the, the giant panda, aren't they, Alex? They are and I rare. think four years ago there was less than 100 left in the wow. whole world. And now, thanks to places like Forge Mill, I think there's nearly 300 breeding females left. That's amazing news, isn't so it? So Alex and the gang here are actually saving this really rare goat from dying out because it'd be a shame after 800 years if they stopped existing. Definitely. And that's why it's so important we use these breeds for what they're made for. So these guys are made for grazing and they're made to make meat as well. And it's really important we actually use them for what they are meant for. Otherwise, they'll die out. So this is Graham anyway. And Graham Hi, is Graham. actually a bit of an odd one because he didn't come out quite like we were expecting. He's got this grey tinge to him and this funny bit on his face. And he's just a bit different. And he's actually a throwback to an ancient goat uh, called the Old English. So that's what Graham is. But that's why, uh, yeah, why he's called Graham. He's doing quietly there, isn't he, Millie? Oh, she's looking his for her baby. That's his mum. <laughs> Do you want him back? So a lot of people think that 
only boy animals have horns, but that's not true, is it? It's not always a bull that has horns. Sometimes cows have them. Yes. And girls and goats can have horns Definitely. as well as billy goats. Yes, you might just notice they're a bit different. So if you can see all these are girls down here, but if you go over there, you can see our buck, which is a male goat. Oops, sorry about the noise. I think there's a roller driving um, He is a buck and he's got much bigger horns and they're much more impressive. Oh, there's a big digger. Who likes diggers? Let's see the digger. See we love to see a digger. Look at that big digger. Whoa. Wow. That's a big digger. Question we've had, how are the horses? There they are, the horses. Hopefully you can hear us again. This is Princess and Duchess, and they are doing really good. They're enjoying being together, and they're so cheeky. And uh, yeah, Millie and Tom look after the horses the most. They're really good at looking after them. So um, yeah, anything to say about the horses, Millie? No? They are very <laughs> good now with the farrier. They used to be much more difficult to handle, but they are coming on really well. Oh, Martin's about to ram Tom. <laughs> he doesn't like Tom. He doesn't like oh, men. I think it's a man thing. Be friends. It's okay. Don't be so angry. <laughs> he likes ladies, but not men. But he likes everybody who's got food. So that's the main thing. And then here's our little ponies. They're also doing good. They just can't wait to see you as well. That's Rocky. They're eating his hay. And over in the corner, looking longingly at the straw, which she wants to eat, is Megan. So there she is. And what type of ponies are these, Alex? Oh, you may show me up here. I'm not quite sure. I imagine they're Shetland ponies, are they? Yeah, they're little Shetland ponies. Rocky's got crazy hair. Yeah. Look at that. It looks like he's wearing a wig most of the time. <laughs> but yeah, so no, that's them. It's a bit windy here, hopefully. We'll Great. Then there's some other people that, or some other animals that you said that we need to meet, aren't there? Some other sheep. We've got some new lambs. Have we got time to see them? We'll yeah. See them well, let's come and see them now. Yeah, everyone wants to see them now? Okay, we're going to walk back through okay. the wind. Okay, back through the wind. You guys can all sit at home, though, in the nice and warmth while we're just out here in the cold. It is really cold today. So I hope it warms up again for when you can visit. Else you'll need to come in all of your clothing but all the animals are lovely and tucked up warm in with all the hay in here yeah i'll start climbing over the fences and they're all gonna run away from me because it's over here that you might be able to see Look down here. Oh, I'm going to take you through some of the holes. These guys are tiny, Alex, but who are they? These are another one of our rare breed of sheep. These ones are called Borres. And their lambs are so, so small and very, very cute. And these guys normally live at Park Farm with Sunny. So if you ever see them out and about, that's who they are. And they're quite scared sheep. They're always scared of people because they're so late. They're so old fashioned. They're so primitive that they're not used to being with people. So there we go. So there's three pens here and we can have a go at spraying them if you like, if we've got time to Yeah, go. yeah. All right then. So these need numbering. They do. Tom, do you want to try and grab one? Yeah, grab one of the lambs. And look how small they are compared to other little sheep that we have here. They're tiny. They are tiny. So Millie, do you want to give them a spray? These will be number three, these ones. We're doing them backwards. No. <laughs> These ones were only born last night, very, very late last night, at about 4 a.m. Oh, good work. There we go. We'll see if we can spray the other one. It might not show up so much, but at least we'll know who he is. He's very pretty, isn't he? Is it a girl or a boyfriend? Uh, we've had a question. Is being on the farm fun? 
Yeah. Being on the farm is so much fun, definitely. If it's what you love to do. I suppose if you don't like cold and you don't like being outside, it might not be as fun. But no, lots of fun things to do here, definitely. What do you guys think? Is it fun? Surprise, guys! <laughs> it's been a long morning for Tom. Karen and I love coming down to the farm. It's a lot of fun down here. And we've had a question: Do you have any pigs on the farm, Alex? Yes, we do. At the moment, we've got one pig called oh, I'm not very good at names. Dotty. She's called Dotty. <laughs> and funnily enough, she is actually Dotty. She's a special breed of sheep Aww. called an Oxford Sandy and Black. But she's here. And this is a really good question while we've got you and Tom and Millie here who are our apprentices, who are trainee farmers. Somebody's asked about how you want, how, if you want to become a farmer, what do you do? Oh, how good do you become question. a farmer? Tom, how are you becoming a farmer? What are you doing? Shout loud. So, Rob Bassett is an apprentice. Nice. And I came on volunteering. Nice. So, you started as a volunteer when you were quite young, didn't you, Tom? And then now you're at Rodbaston, which is a farming college. So it's a bit like sixth form, but you learn how to farm there. So yeah, so that's how Tom went into farming. And Millie is a similar route, isn't it? You're doing an apprenticeship. Who are you doing yours with? The same again, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. And it's two years, your one? Yeah, and they're here helping out. And similarly with me, actually, I started off helping on a farm and then learned lots and lots from lots of different farmers, tried lots of different types of farming to find what I love the most. And then I went on to university to study it, to learn all about different parts of farming. So yeah, lots of ways to get into farming, definitely. And you've travelled doing farming as well, haven't you, Alex? Yes, I did. So at uni, I got the opportunity to go all the way to the other side of the world, to New Zealand, to learn about different types of farming. And I milked goats there, I milked sheep there, and cows. So yeah, it was a really good learning experience, and I definitely recommend it. And if anyone wants any work experience, in the summer we'll be allowed to have people back so you can get in contact by email and see if you can book yourself in for a bit of volunteering or work experience. Nice. Nearly there. Let's so, there is, we said at the beginning that we've got an exciting <gasps> announcement to make. Oh yes, over there. So um, this is breaking news that we only found out five minutes before we went live yeah. today. And Alex and Laura and Tom and Millie and I and all the animals are very, very excited about this. Do you want to tell us, Alex? Okay, so we've got the go-ahead to officially open again to the public on Monday, the 12th of April. So we are so excited to welcome you back here. We just can't, we can't wait at all. But can we ask you one big favour? We will be putting tickets online, but actually Laura and I do that and we're at the farm at the moment. So if you could give us a chance Wait till to this afternoon. today and get home and then we will get tickets off yeah. online, hopefully by tonight. And then you can book a slot to come yeah. from Monday the 12th. We can't wait to see you. So good. I think it'll be a little bit different. We don't want to stay outside and the animals will be inside. So we've got it all set up so you can see loads and loads and loads. But please book a ticket. We just can't wait to see you again. Yes, we're so looking forward to that. Now we will also see you again on Wednesday, no, it is Wednesday, Friday lunchtime. Friday, 12 o'clock, we will be back on Facebook Live. Um, so join us again then, because um, we can't wait to see you again and show you more of the farm here you know at Forge Mill. Yes, on Friday, Alex. we have some car centric born <laughs> this week to meet, so we can meet those on Friday. We've got some chips that have been born this week. Your and alarm clock? My alarm clock. Mm, we might be able to meet him maybe next week on Wednesday to ah. we'll see how he's doing. And then also we can go see Valentine and Tom and Doris. How about that? Amazing. That Can't nice. wait. So join us again Friday at 12 o'clock. We will see you then. Um, so bye. bye.